Hello members of Atom, my name is Mark Williams from Leeming Senior High School and with my fellow media teacher Callum Hunter we are going to show you basically how do you set up a live TV program in your classroom that you can use in your school. Now the fact is I'm going to do the really simple stuff, what you need, how you set it up and Callum is going to do the more complex stuff with a, which a lot of you will relate to. So over to you, Callum. Thank you very much, Mark, and uh, hello, Australian Teachers of Media, Western Australia. So, to get your TV studio started, these are the two boxes that you are looking at. Uh, the Blackmagic Atem TV Studio HD, as well as the Blackmagic Hyperdeck Mini. Now, it's really important to point out that in the case of the Television Studio HD. They make two models of the HD, the HD and the HD Pro. The Pro model is essentially exactly the same as this one that you're seeing here. The only difference being is that it actually has an attached switchboard um, that replicates the software that we're gonna be showing you a little bit later in the PD. Now, when we talk about these two devices, it's not as simple as just purchasing the TV Studio HD. Because if you wanna record it, this doesn't record, it really more acts like a conventional switchboard uh, to your cameras that will be connected to the device itself. And we'll go through the back of it very, very soon. The Hyperdeck Mini is what you are after for recording, okay? So essentially here you'll notice we've got an SD card in here at the moment. It's got two SD card slots that allow you to record any of the action that is going on. For a very, very simple TV studio setup, all you actually need to do is make sure you've got a formatted SD card in there and you can format it using the menu and set buttons and the little sort of twisty dial that we've got here. Uh, you can format it to be XFAT, which is sort of that universal file format uh, most of you will be aware of that we actually submit our USBs uh, for submission for the final ATAR films. Once it's for formatted, uh, it's a simple case of pressing the record button when things are ready to go and anything that you switch on the TV studio will automatically be recorded on here and then once you're done you press stop. Nice and easy. So it's very very important to point out that if you are going to be using the TV studio to record as well as doing it as like a camera switcher you will ultimately require a hyperdeck to do your recording. Uh, now throughout the course of this little breakdown we're going to talk about a few of the issues that we had at Leaving Senior High School in terms of when we first set it up to try and sort of troubleshoot the issue for you guys. Now the first thing that we sort of came across was the quality of the SD cards. Okay, we find that ultimately recording off the Hyperdeck itself is a real power drain. So to give you an idea, the uh, professional development that you're seeing today, we've probably done about seven gig of raw recording data over the very short period of time that we've used the TV studio. As you can imagine, I've got the TV studio right here, so we're not using it right now. But the key is, is that you're gonna need quite a lot of data, so we've been very trustworthy of the SanDisk ones. We've gone with the 64 gig, sort of your more classic class 10. Uh, and realistically, you're looking for a write speed at probably no slower than 80. Uh, but if you can get a card that goes over 90 in terms of its megabit per second write speed, I would strongly suggest that. Um, because the end product, if you don't have something with a fast enough write speed, it really does come out clunky and choppy and that frame rate that you've set up pretty much falls away. So that just goes into there. The great thing about the Hyperdeck with its two SD card slots is that you can actually set it up to piggyback one another. So if you start recording on SD card slot one and it's filling up, you get a little flashing button at the top here in red and then eventually once it runs out, you don't need to do any moving or changing or stopping your recording. It should automatically jump over to the second slot in your Hyperdeck. Um, for the cases of very, very simplified uh, recording, the Hyperdeck Mini uh, is great for recording. Its second purpose is actually you can run it as a secondary camera and do pre-recorded footage through an SD card. If you have any questions about that, we'll happily answer them during our Q&A on November the 12th. Now, moving over to the TV studio, which is sort of the biggest part here. When I turn this thing over, you're going to see all the little different connections that pop up as we go through. So if you're looking at this here, it is quite a behemoth. It's got an awful lot of stuff going on in the back. So I'm just gonna break down a few of them really, really quickly for you. And like I said, give you some troubleshooting things that we sort of experienced here at Leeming. So first of all, as you can see, it takes power with a pretty standard three-prong kettle cord. Um, it comes, one actually comes with the box. 
Fun fact for you, does not come with the Hyperdeck Mini. So if you do purchase a Hyperdeck Mini, you will need a separate three prong kettle cord for that. If you don't have one, uh, you can notice that there's a control ethernet port here that can go into a modem. If you have sort of that high end modem that's sort of very, very new, probably in the last two to three years, the modem can actually power both devices. So even if you need the hy Hyperdeck, don't have the charging cable, you can actually charge via the ethernet port. The back here, you've got a USB 2.0 port. That is essentially for upgrades. Um, you're not attaching anything meaningful, but any upgrade to the hardware can be done through that USB 2.0. Now, for the nice nitty gritty stuff to make your life a little bit easier. Your HDMI inputs, one, two, three, and four. It has four inputs for cameras to go into, okay? And then you'll notice up here, we've got quite a few of these little sockets here. For those of you that aren't in the know with sort of the more high end sort of style of things, these are your SDI ports, okay? We have several SDI inputs as well as SDI outputs, okay? The inputs are designed that if you do have a camera uh, that has SDI, you can run through the SDI there. Funny thing to point out as well though, our Hyperdeck Mini, if you just take a look at the back here, You'll notice that it has an HDMI out, but to actually use it as a recording device, you actually need to use one of the SDI ports on this little side here, because that is how it is directly connecting to the TV studio via the sort of top level here, which is our outputs for the SDI. So any one of those two, preferably the ones at the start, are the best ways to go. So if you're hooking up SDI from here into one of these two here is the absolute best way to go. Okay, so SDI, you can put extra devices in like Hyperdex, and then you also use those for cameras. You will also notice guys that there is analog audio in. So you'll probably notice throughout our professional development as a really, really basic setup, we're using HDMI and we're running our audio through the cameras through external mic microphones where the audio is coming in through the cameras. But you are more than welcome to use an analog audio input for channels one and two to get your audio coming directly into the box, whether that be through boom mics or so on, okay? So as you can see, a little bit complex at the back. Another important part to point out though is that Ethernet port I told you about that was capable of powering the device if you didn't have external power directly to a power point. If this connects to a modem or into a system where it is running through a computer, this is how you gain access to the software that you'll be able to install on either a PC or a Mac. Okay, so as you can see, it's quite complicated at the back. It can be a little bit daunting, um, but most of these run relatively smoothly. So now that I've shown you the big bulking one, I'll just show you the back of our Hyperdeck Mini as well uh, one more time to give you an idea. So like I said, if you're connecting up SDI out, SDI in, record out, reference in. So this record out, this is the SDI plugin that you will then be putting into your Hyperdeck. Okay, sorry, into your TV studio. So the USB-C port is exactly the same as what we talked about for the studio. That USB-C port is for upgrades to the system, okay? It's got the ethernet port here. Again, largely for this one, this is designed to charge the box if you do not have external power, okay? Uh, final thing I probably want to go through with these two devices is as you can imagine with most live TV studio recordings, there's a lot of sensitivity when this TV studio is trying to pick up cameras, okay? So what you need to do is make sure in your settings, and I've already shown you this before, where you go through menu, and then you use the set button, and you sort of little dial here to navigate the menu. One of the things it will ask you to do is the format in which you want to record, such as your resolution and frame rate. Um, the resolution and frame rate obviously needs to match the cameras that you are using. Uh, the maximum this one outputs is 1080p 50. Uh, it also does 1080i50, which is interesting if you're using sort of an older camera. Uh, it also has a 720p format on here as well. If you're interested in doing 4K, there is a 4K version of this box, but only SDI at the back, which we'll cover again at the end of this professional development. So there you have it, guys. These are the two boxes that you are going to need to sort of be your starter pack to do live TV studio using the black magic suite of technologies. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope I didn't go too fast. If I did, 
This is why we put these things up on YouTube. Make handy use of that pause button. And uh, I'm now going to take you back to Mark in the studio. Thanks, Callum. It should be clear to you that this is a program that is much more capable than we're shown here. It can do all sorts of things, but we're just going to keep it really simple um, so it can be applicable to a lot of classrooms. Now, some of the things it can do is to um, set cameras. It will also teach us how to record uh, from those cameras and uh, then also to uh, young Callum, uh, who's going to take you through the lot more technical part of it. Me, simple and stupid. Callum, technical genius. Thanks very much, Mark. Uh, as you can see, guys, I have had a slight costume change. It was a uh, purposeful decision made in the last 30 seconds that Mark was introducing to you and totally has absolutely nothing to do with any sort of technical fault that we may have had that would have forced me to record this on a completely separate day. So just to give you a quick rundown, we're actually now, you're sort of getting a half look at the control room that we have at Leeming Senior High School. Now, we're aware that a lot of schools won't have the opportunity to use a con control room, um, but the process essentially works exactly the same way. We've plugged our HDMI cables through a wall out there and a sort of through a series of uh, conduits and things that's found its way in here through another input, but the TV studio is a direct plug and play for anyone that doesn't have a control room like we do. The first thing I wanted to introduce you to is now that you've sort of seen the boxes and how it all plugs in and works, I wanted to show you sort of some of the features that will go on inside the room once everything is sort of switched on. And the first thing I wanted to point out to you was multi-view. Okay, now we didn't mention it in the breakdown of the box, but at the back of your TV studio HD, there is a very defined HDMI port with the word multi view on it. You plug that into any computer monitor or TV, and it actually gives you all the different things that we have here. So we've got our program, so that's the thing that actually would be recording when you choose to record. You've got our preview, which is what you're queuing up next, which Mark will be able to show you uh, in the Atem software, which is really, really cool. Uh, and then finally, we've got all the eight things that we're sort of working through here. So we have a standard three camera setup at the moment. So there's cameras one, two, and three. You'll notice we've got this little box here, which could act as a camera four. We actually use it for a hyperdeck, and we'll talk a little bit about the second use of the hyperdeck very, very soon. And finally, cameras five and six, and two media players that run through the Atom software, which again, we will cover very, very soon. So multi-view is a great way of tracking what's going on, and also sort of helps you cue what comes up next uh, in terms of what's exactly going on and what's being recorded. Now, the thing I want to draw your attention to now is sort of our setup here. So you'll be very familiar with this long box down the bottom here. That is our TV Studio HD. This is the hyperdeck we're recording from, so I'll just show you there's a little bit of a separation between these two. These are two separate boxes. This one here, that is our Atom hyperdeck recording box. This is what we use to record using the SD card that we covered in the previous little section with me. The second one here is our hyperdeck that we use to create uh, pre-recorded footage. So essentially, as I've mentioned before, you can plug it in as almost like a, another camera, and then you can play things that the students have already recorded. Now the process to do that is not straight up plug and play, so for the introductory purposes of this course, we're sort of going to leave this one to the side for now. But what I wanted to show you is that if for any reason you can't use the ATEM software, there is full control uh, in the use of the television studio. So you will notice here we have all of our white buttons down here. These log into all of the corresponding uh, media devices that you can plug into it that I've shown you in multi-view. Okay, if something is red, like camera one is red at the moment, that's our program. So red is record. We use that as media teachers all the time. The kids are very familiar. When the camera's flashing red, you're recording. Red button works exactly the same way. If there's no light up like there is on camera two, it simply means it's not being queued up. It doesn't mean there's not a camera plugged in. Because as you can see from our multi-view here, all three of our cameras are showing some sort of vision. When you go to three, you'll notice that one is lit green. That is our preview screen. Now the purpose of having a preview screen is that it allows us to queue up what camera comes next. So what we can do when we've got kids, if they know they're doing an interview process, camera one might be an establishing shot of everyone in the room, and then camera two might be of our host, and then camera three might be of the person being in interviewed. Which means essentially what you can do is if you know the next thing that comes out of someone's mouth is going to be from a particular person, you preview that camera and you get it ready to go. Now, how do we control beyond the buttons? Because as you can see here, I'll just move camera two, 
is now the preview. I can go to a black screen, which is normally our hyperdeck, and then I can make my way down for all of these series of black screens before we go back to our camera three. So control on that is pretty easy, but you would have noticed that as I was pressing the buttons, it was only altering it to preview. It wasn't altering it from the record. So the program button doesn't really change using this section here. You have to start using this section here where we've got something called auto and cut. It's very simple. So the cut button is the one on the bottom left hand corner there. If you press cut, it just does a straight cut over, okay? Nothing fancy about that there. You'll see it on this little screen here. It's just a straight cut. Auto is whatever transition you've preset. Now with the kids, we don't try to complicate things too much. It's standard one is a cross dissolve. So when I press auto, it'll automatically create a cross dissolve on that screen there. So you have that sort of more smooth transition. When we're doing TV shows, cut's probably the easiest way to go anyway, but it's there for you if you need it. Now, if you look here, just to sort of give you a quick idea of how sort of the menu system works on here, there's these buttons down here, auxiliary, menu, and set. We also have menu and set on our hyperdeck there. When you press menu, it changes this screen up to contain the menu. When you press set, you can now scroll your way down using our little dial that we discussed previously. Okay, now there are all types of menu settings here that you can use. You can find the IP address for the modem that you're going to use to use our software, which Mark will explain very, very soon. It can be used to make sure that the resolution and frame rate on the TV studio is exactly the same as what's being outputted to the cameras, as well as any audio fixes, for formatting certain devices, so on and so forth. It works exactly the same way on the Hyperdeck. Realistically, the only thing you'll be using menu on the Hyperdeck for will be to make sure that the correct SD card is formatted and that it is ready to go for when you start recording. When it asks you to format, it's going to give you XFAT, which is our universal format, but it'll also give you a Mac safe format, which you are more than welcome to use as well if you are a Mac user. So that is pretty much a general breakdown of how the TV studio operates. The Hyperdeck operates even easier. Provided that you've got the SD card plugged in there, it's a simple situation where you press record. Once you press record, that light will flash red and the counter will go on here. And you'll notice, guys, that the screen coming from our Hyperdeck is identical to the screen playing on our TV studio. If I choose to now cut, it changes with it as well. Okay, so it is recording everything that we are using the TV studio for, which is essentially, like we've said in previous ones, is a switchboard. You will need both boxes in order to properly record. When you're done with recording, all you've got to do is press stop. Okay, you'll notice it's got two SD card slots. The beauty of that is, guys, is that if an SD card is running low, it will jump over to the second slot once it is full. I would give you an advice as a little bit of troubleshooting. Do not remove the first card once that is full. Sometimes the uh, Hyperdeck still needs a little bit of time to process the material. So if you pull it out early, you run the risk of actually losing the first half of your production. So keep the two SD cards in. I can't imagine anyone would need three SD cards to do your average production in the classroom. I'm now actually going to hand you over to Mark, who's covertly made his way behind the camera, to take us through the TV studio software on the computer. Thanks, Callum. Now, what I'm going to show you is um, actually a really, really good way of involving students in the Blackmagic um, HD Studio. And that's by actually using it uh, so that you have the on-screen controls here. And there are four uh, screens that you can use. The first one here is the ATM software control, which is a switcher. And as Callum explained about how green is the um, standby color and red is the recording color, up here on this first line here we have the program. So these, whatever's pressed here is the camera that's going to be recorded. Down here we have the preview cameras down here. So for example we've got camera 3 on uh, record at the moment. We've got camera one on preview. If I go to the switch here, or if I do it more smoothly, if I do it through auto, uh, it should change from camera three being the program to camera one being the program. So let's just check that out, see whether it works. Perfect. And so now you've got camera three as the standby. Now, we've, the way we've got it set up here, we've got three cameras that 
we're using. So now I'm going to switch to camera two in preview. That's the next one that I, I wanted to go to. Again, I'm going to press auto and it will um, come up here. The screen that um, Callum pointed out before where we've got the three cameras here, we have the program screen, we have the preview here. Everything that he was doing on the Blackmagic HD TV studio there is replicated on screen here. And uh, kids who are using this get the hang of it very, very easily. Now Callum said also that um, we can access Hyperdex here and you can access Hyperdex through here. You can change the type of transition. But if we go to the Hyperdex, how do they incorporate into these screens? So down here we have the four options of the screens that we've got. So we go from Switcher, the next one is Media. And this is where we would load uh, any backgrounds that we want to take the place of um, the green screen. So up here we've got a, a green screen background, uh, six minutes. We've got a TV studio here. We've got um, a JPEG that's been blown up that was actually for a fashion show here. And we've got a background of a newsroom city. So these are actually stocked in in Media Player. If we go back to Switcher, over on the right hand side of this screen here, we can start to access the Media Player. And if you see there, it says Media Player 1, we've got a green screen background and we could select that to be um, part of this. And obviously we can green screen as well. The Hyperdex come in on this side and uh, it takes a bit of working out, but it's definitely worth working with the Hyperdex and the software control. So we've got the second one, which is where you load the media. In this third screen here, this is dedicated purely to audio. So we can turn um, the audio on, on the three channels that we've got here. And we've got a choice of putting uh, audio follows video, which comes up here as uh, AFV. So we can actually have the audio follow the video if we want it, um, as we went round from camera to camera in our setup. Um, you have Unity here, so there's headroom, and obviously you can sort of change audio levels here. Um, we tend to use the audio off the cameras at the moment, or for at least for lower school. If you set up um, separate audio, uh, we find the best way is actually to attach the audio uh, to the camera. So run a mic lead from the camera, and that may actually influence the sort of camera that you want to buy. Um, because the ones that we've got, basically we, we chose them because they've got um, a good way of getting the signal out uh, through HDMI, um, but also because it's actually got um, two balanced inputs uh, into um, audio. So it's got a reasonable, um, a reasonable microphone on the front, but you can actually dedicate um, a stereo channels um, to improve your audio. Now this last one here is probably the one that unless you're actually buying uh, black magic cameras. This is going to be the one that is maybe of least use to you because um, one of the wonderful things about any anyone who's used Apple computers or um, black magic stuff, it works absolutely perfectly with other black magic hardware. So if you do have um, say the black magic studio cameras, if you can afford that, um, fantastic cameras then you will find that you can change um, hue, you can change uh, gain, you can actually zoom in or zoom out um, and control what shots you're actually using with the cameras uh, from this screen. Now what we do is actually put um, a person on each camera. In the control room here there would be likely to be three people one actually uh, operating the Hyperdex, the Record Hyperdex, and any um, input that we want to put in the Input Hyperdex. Uh, one person who is changing 
um, switching from camera to camera and one person who's actually reading the script. Now most scripts that we um, would use would come out in a format like this but what we actually give to the control room is actually a script like this. So if we can have a look at this script that what we've got here is we've got a camera shot so we've got the camera that's being used at the moment, uh, the personnel who are running that camera and also the next shot. So each one of the camera people in the studio actually have this as well. So for example the person on camera one knows that the next shot is coming up um, five shots away down here and it's going to be of Ben and Dean, um, it's a two shot of the whole scene. So they know that when we've got to this part of the script that their camera is no longer on show and they know where to go for the next one. So it actually really involves your camera people instead of just saying, well, I've got a still camera, I've got nothing to do. They've actually got to read ahead in the script and we find it actually makes for a really precise and professional um, level of interaction with the kids. Back to you, Callum. Thank you very much, Mark. Much appreciated. Now, come on, get out of here. We need you in the studio go. for the next round. Hello. Bye. Come on. Out, 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 out. <laughs> All right, guys. So just remember, that was the ATAM software. It actually comes boxed in, actually in an SD card when you purchase the TV studio. Uh, it is able to be played on a Mac or a PC, so it doesn't matter what device you guys are going on. It is the technology to take you forward. Uh, so I will now, hopefully he's back in there, I will take it back to Mark who will go through the final sort of few elements of what goes on in the filming space using Blackmagic Atem TV Studio. Hi, welcome back to the studio. I'm now going to bring Callum back into the studio and we'll go through some of the basics that you need. Thank you very much Mark. So, throughout the course of this professional development, we've already taken you through the Blackmagic Television Studio HD, as well as the Hyperdeck Mini you're going to be using to record your footage, accompanied with the software that you can easily install on Mac and PC. Now we're going to talk about the technologies that you're going to need inside the physical film space to make your, t to make your television studio a reality. And we're going to start off with Mark taking us through the cameras that we use here. The cameras we use here are the Panasonic HCPV100s. Um, it's a good basic video camera. Some of the advantages of it are the fact that it does have a built-in microphone that's actually quite good quality. Um, it has a, a pull-out screen here. But the most important advantage of this camera is that it has an HDMI out, which means that it can carry a video signal and also an audio signal back to the mixing desk. Now, it doesn't matter what camera you've got, does matter though whether you do have an HDMI out. If you want a more high-end product, Kevin. Right now Blackmagic is moving a lot of its technology towards SDI cables and they are normally found at the moment on very very high definition high quality cameras that maybe you don't have access to. So if you are sort of in a semi-professional environment like many of us are within schools we strongly suggest you use cameras that have a full HDMI output if you're going for the high end though, you need to have the SDI cable inputs enabled to, to place those in. It's very important to point out guys that there are currently two major models of the television studio. There's the television studio HD as well as the television studio 4K. Now the 4K may sound like a great idea, but that is exclusively SDI cables. So if you're looking to run HDMI, you really must push it towards using HDMI with the standard HD setup. Another important part that we do want to discuss today, and Mark will hand over again, is all about the microphones potentially that you can use in your studio. Now, in terms of microphones, there are a number of ways that we can get the sound to the mixing desk. If your camera doesn't have a good microphone on it, you can always go for a shotgun mic. Say something like the Rode Video Mic Pro, or if you want to actually have a microphone on the table, we really like it the Zoom H2, which is this one, which you can place surreptitiously anywhere on the desk, picks up fantastic sound, and you can just add the sound, you can synchronize it and add the sound later. 
Two other options that potentially you have going for you here. Yeah. One is, of course, is in the case of our Panasonic HCPV 100s, it does have a three-pronged XLR output, which then allows us to plug in condenser mics on tables. So, for example, when students are doing podcasts or talk shows, rather than running through the microphones through a separate board, you might be able to control your audio physically with a condenser mic mm. through your camera itself. Another option, which we are actually using today for the purposes of this professional development... It's the best. It is the best. And apologies if the audio just gets a little bit louder here, is the Rode Wireless Go. Now, if your camera does have access to an auxiliary output, these are absolutely fantastic. The receiver attaches to the top of the camera, it automatically syncs into the microphone that we have yeah. here, and the audio will come directly through the camera, which means it will come through the television studio setup. We have found that for more covert projects where we don't need an obvious microphone in the space, the kids have really, really used these uh, to their fullest extent. So they are a great little piece of tech that you can use. Now, before we move on to the lighting, and the lighting is going to be very, very crucial as a final step, it's really important to point out, going back to HDMI, the type of cabling that we've used at the school. Now, the HDMI cables that we use at the school are 4K compatible, gold-plated, and they are roughly 10 to 15 metres in length. These are not your garden variety $15 to $20 HDMI cables. You could be realistically paying anywhere between $65 to $80 for an HDMI cable like this. So, why go with that? If you're like us and have a control room, it means that the physical technology of the box could be further away from the cameras than you would like. You need an HDMI cable that is capable of transmitting across a long distance. And unfortunately, standard definition HDMI cables past five meters really don't cut it for a studio like this. You are going to require a 4K compatible, preferably gold plated 10 to 15 meter. Even if you are using the studio really close to your cameras, I would still recommend using a two to five meter 4K capable HDMI cable. It just reduces the chances of your camera not being received by the studio itself. Thanks, Carl. Of course, if you don't have a good cable like this, you're going to need a booster on your HDMI. Absolutely. And that's a real pain. Okay, the last thing we're going to talk about is the sort of lighting that you need. Now, if you're going to do it up against a green screen like the one we've got here, and by the way, if you're setting up for a green screen, it's worthwhile actually getting one that has the capability to curve round walls. It gives you so much more uh, area to work with and it gives you so much more options in terms of putting a background in. But if you're going to use a green screen, what you need is totally even lighting. What we use here is a set of four LED uh, screen lights that light the screen completely evenly. You can actually buy, um, quite cheaply, uh, good lights uh, from eBay, but the key thing is they need to be set up so there are no dark patches, no light patches, uh, no areas that are going to fuzz out. Absolutely. So guys, today we have taken you through all the different steps for an introduction to live TV studio recording, specifically using the Blackmagic technology. As most of you will already know, we will be available via a WebEx Q&A at 4.30 on the 12th of November. If you have any questions about the setup that we use here, or any questions about extending the abilities beyond an introductory level, please feel free to ask them there. We thank you very, very much, Australian Teachers of Media Western Australia, for joining us on our professional development. This is the first one that we've run, so we were a touch nervous today. We hope that we're able to give you all the information that you need, but just remember, if we didn't, we do have that Q&A for you at 4.30 on November the 12th, 2020, if you're watching this incredibly late. And um, I would just like to say, when Callum goes for Prime Minister of Australia, everyone vote for him. He'll, he'll be very, very good. Thank you very much for your time, guys, and we look forward to seeing you at our Q&A. Thanks.